Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous Wednesday. Today I wanted to do a little bit of a different video. I thought that I would share five things that I didn't know about luxury goods way back when or before the craze started uh, or before I started buying. And uh, before some of you start thinking that this is a rant video, that this is a uh, let me bust out my violin and sing the woe me's type of video, no. Calm down, it's not that type of video. I've always told you guys that I'm going to share my experiences with you, good or bad. These are some of the things that I've come across throughout the years, and some of you might experience it, some of you might not. So, you know, I figured why not just share? <laughs> Sharing is caring, right? So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get started. Let's start with the first one, and that is quality. Now, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me when it comes to this, uh, when it comes to this topic, but it is what it is. Uh, for me, when I was younger, I always thought that the more expensive something was, the better it was going to be. I felt that it was going to outperform, outlast uh, something that's less expensive. I always thought that. Uh, of course, I'm strictly talking about luxury goods here, and that's definitely not the case. A lot of these uh, fashion houses, I'm not going to sit here and you know point fingers or anything like that, but a lot of these fashion houses have some very pretty price tags uh, attached to their lovely items, but the quality just isn't there. So the quality that you're getting for the price that you're paying doesn't really add up. Uh, so for me, it's more so about not uh, dismissing a less expensive brand just because it doesn't have that you know, that astronomical price point. Uh, a $6,000 bag is definitely not always going to be better than a $2,000 bag. The $6,000 bag might end up having quality issues. It might end up having loose threading. It might end up having so many different things going for it. And the $2,000 bag, might you might end up using it for eons. Uh, you know, of course, I'm being uh, dramatic, but you might end up using it for so many years and nothing will ever happen to it. It will be a workhorse. It will be your ride or die type of bag, uh, you know, and it, a lot of it has to do with the type of person that you are. If you're the type of person that ends up babying your handbags, um, of course, they're always going to last a lot longer than someone that ends up using their bags for the sole purpose of carrying their items, uh, you know, and maybe they just want to have a little variety in their collection by having uh, a Chanel, by having a Louis Vuitton, by having a Gucci or whatever it is. So that also has a lot to do with it. Uh, but I have experienced it firsthand. You know, I was thinking that, oh, this, you know, for example, this wallet was a thousand dollars and it'll be perfect and nothing will ever happen to it. Again, that was my mentality going into it, you know. Know, and then fast forward a few months later, it's falling apart. It's not working out compared to say my coach wallet that I had for five years. And even though it, it shows wear, it still didn't have the same type of, um, you know, it didn't have the same type of details falling apart that the thousand dollar wallet had. You know what I mean? <laughs> so don't ever dismiss a brand for being less expensive and thinking automatically it's not going to work out, it's not going to last, or anything like that compared to the six thousand, the ten thousand, the five thousand dollar handbags. Not at all. Uh, so quality was something that was a little bit more eye opening. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like I said, everyone's going to treat their items differently. So <laughs> whether you agree with me or not, that is, you know, what I have come to, to find out. And I think that's probably why I'm such a big fan of some of the contemporary brands that I own as far as clothing goes and shoes go. Uh, because for me, for example, sneakers, I am a huge sneaker head and there are no there are no sneakers better, in my opinion, than Vans and Converse. Not Gucci's, not not Chanel's, not Louis Vuitton's, or anything like that. For me, Vans just always end up working out, and they last forever in a lifetime, it seems like, <laughs> you know? And you can really put those things to the ringer compared to the luxury, uh, the luxury pieces. Uh, and I know some of you might be thinking, well, that's the whole point. It's luxury. It's not, um, it's, it, it, it's the association of having that, uh, that brand that might not necessarily end up outlasting something contemporary, but it's also, you know, the, the point of carrying a luxury piece. That's not really how I work. That's not really what ends up working out for me. Uh, but like I said, <laughs> to each their own. Uh, but that is um, one of the things that uh, really kind of, you know, hit me in the face <laughs> when it first came to, to buying luxury goods. 
On to the second topic. Now, this one is probably going to give me some side eyes as well, <laughs> but that is the obsession slash addiction slash um, keeping up with the Joneses. A lot of people end up referring it to that, um, or just in general, uh, the the obsession taking on a form of its own. Uh, now, for me, it was probably six or seven years ago uh, that when I got bit by the luxury bug, and someone really expressed it perfectly on Minx Monday once. They said, "Do you ever get the gimmies?" Uh, and this is pretty much along that same um, along that same type of phrasing. But for me, six or seven years ago, I would buy items just to buy them. There was no rhyme or reason. There was no structure. And uh, really, social media has a lot to do with it. <laughs> and I'm, again, I'm not going to sit here and sing the woe me's because I am sure I add to the social media aspect of it. Uh, but I would get caught up in, you know, in the whole thing. And I was just buying just to buy. And I was just, uh, for example, like I'd be looking at a bag. It was on my wish list, let's say, for a few months. I finally acquired that item. And then a week later, I'm already looking for another handbag, you know? And like I said, that person said that it's kind of like you get the gimmies. You have one thing, then give me another one. I give me another one. So it's, it's kind of like a rabbit hole. And, um, I have pulled myself out of it, so <laughs> I'm very thankful for that. Uh, but it is very much a real thing, you know. And uh, there are also people out there who, um, when I when I'm saying the whole keeping up with the Joneses, if uh, if so and so gets a bag, then this person wants to get the bag because she has it, or because uh, this person has that, and it might not end up working out for you. And uh, I lost a lot of money when it came down to uh, all of those purchases that I was buying just to buy. And I've said it before, I don't regret any any purchase that I ever made in the past because it's really made me pinpoint uh, the things that end up working out for me now. I can, um, you know, I can with certainty say that this type of bag doesn't work out for me. And this type of item doesn't work out for me because of, you know, X, Y, and Z that I experienced before. But uh, it was it was crazy because I would buy it. It didn't have rhyme or reason. It didn't really work out for me. And then when I'd go to sell it, I was losing so much money because I wasn't really thinking about. Um, I wasn't really thinking about how I would use the item. It was more so just acquiring the item and having it in my collection type of thing. <laughs> so it was. It was, it was crazy. I'm not going to lie. I felt like I went off the deep end. I felt that I was just, I don't know. It was crazy. Sometimes I felt that I was, um, making, uh, what's it called? Like if we, if we'd go on, uh, if we'd go sh out shopping or whatever, I would specifically try to figure out a way to get, you know, to go to luxury stores only. And it was all about luxury, luxury, luxury. And it was, it was kind of, um, it, like I said, it took a form of its own. I like it took a uh, took on a form of its own, and it was, it was, uh, <laughs> it was something insane, is what it was. <laughs> uh, and it's definitely not like that now. I have since. Um, really uh, kind of uh, made my collection a lot smaller. I've kept the bags or I've kept the items that really work out for me. And when it goes to buying uh, another item, uh, even though sometimes I will have impulse purchases because I even as much as I try to fight those urges of impulse purchases, they do end up happening like we saw with the whole Hawaii haul. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and say I'm perfect and it doesn't happen anymore. Not at all. Uh, but they're very far and few between. And now I feel that I'm a little bit more apprehensive. I'm a little bit more uh, detailed as to what I end up adding to my collection. I will sit there and I'll research it forever in a day uh, just to see if it ends up working out for me. And of course, kind of like what I mentioned, uh, I think it was a three, week, uh, three or four weeks ago when I did the video about six things that I do when I'm, you know, when I'm looking for a handbag, uh, sometimes it just takes owning the item in order to see if it works out for you. Uh, but yeah, so taking on a form of its own, it, it, it is real, my friends, <laughs> it is real. And I just had to learn when to say, stop, you're just getting it just because, you know, and I could justify anything. That's my type of personality. And it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's really gotten a lot better. <laughs> Now for number three, I'm kind of going to piggyback off of what I talked about on number two, and that is the hype or giving into and getting wrapped up in the hype. Uh, I know, again, social media also has a lot to do with that, and I'm not trying to sit here and wash my hands and say, oh, I don't do anything like that. I don't spam anything that I really like. No, because I know that I'm, I also like to take a lot of pictures of something that I'm really liking at the moment or whatever it is, or if it's a favorite. Uh, but for hype bags, what I'm talking about is, or, or 
gifts for the it bags. Let's say that you are a hand carry type of person through and through. It's what works out for you. You've tried other silhouettes and it doesn't really suit your lifestyle. And let's say that this season, all you see is crossbody bags everywhere. Everyone is spamming them. And you see that Sally Sue has them and Billy Bob and this person and this person and they're just raving about it and they're saying it's the greatest bag ever. Oh my goodness, you have to have this in your collection. It has to this, it has to that. And they, they kind of build up the expectation of this handbag. So the more you see it, the more you're thinking, hmm, maybe that ends up working out for me. Even though you know that crossbody bags don't work out for you because let's say that they dig into your chest or they dig into your shoulders or whatever it is and you don't like that sensation. But still, you kind of avoid that. You ignore that and you're talking you're just looking at the the it bag the season bag and you go to purchase it and you go to rock it and then you're thinking oh it's not exactly what you expected you know it's not the greatest bag ever or whatever it is and what I say to that is make sure and stay true to what you like uh, I'm not trying to sit here and say that uh, by trying out a different silhouette from something that you've tried in the past that it'll end up changing I'm not trying to say that at all and sometimes by venturing out of your comfort zone it could be some of the greatest uh, decisions that people make when it comes to their collection uh, especially if they've always dismissed uh, a certain type of a uh, certain type of detail that another bag had uh, I'm not trying to say that at all but what I'm saying is that if you know because of you know this and that that it doesn't work out no matter what no matter how many spins you try to add to it no matter what uh, brand uh, makes it it just doesn't work out for you and then you're kind of you know looking at the whole social media thing and the hype and all of that it can get you, you can get wrapped up into it uh, so that's why I'm saying that um, I experienced the same thing like I said all of these points that I'm about that I'm making uh, are all things that I have come in you know, come across. And, um, I remember, uh, there was an item that I purchased. Everyone was talking about it. And I was just like, nah, it's not really me. It doesn't work out. And I kept seeing it and just everyone was just talking about it. Like it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. So I took a chance. I ignored my intuition. I went for it and I'm like, ah, it doesn't work out for me, <laughs> you know, and here we go back again. So I knew, I knew that it wouldn't work out. Uh, and I just ignored all the red flags and I went for it because everyone else is talking about it so much. You might call it gullible, you might call it uh, being naive or whatever it is, but uh, it was something that I experienced nonetheless. So uh, for me, it's all a matter of going into the boutique, trying it out, see if it works out, see if it ends up um, suiting my lifestyle and uh, do the research. And I'll talk about research in just a second. Uh, so <laughs> the hype, the hype, just like getting wrapped up into or getting wrapped up in it. And, um, you know, the whole keeping up with the Joneses, they're very similar. They're very close to one another and they kind of uh, piggyback uh, from each other. So that's why I, I wanted to discuss each one a little bit more in depth. But yeah, the hype, <laughs> the hype is there. <laughs> Number four is sales associates and honesty. Uh, now I know some of you might be thinking I'm crazy for bringing this up, but not all sales associates are the same. There are some out there that go above and beyond. There are some out there that will tell you, uh, that will be very honest with you when it comes to the items that you're trying on or that you are looking to get. Uh, there are some that will listen to you and uh, make sure and help you get the item that ends up working out for you the best or guide you uh, with the with the right type of item for you. But there are also some sales associates that will tell you exactly what you want to hear just to move the sale. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking that's just common sense. It's bound to happen. Again, you can call me naive. You can call me whatever you want, but I didn't think that was the case way back when. I remember going into certain boutiques and, um, you know, I'd go to try on an item and it didn't matter what color, what item I was trying on. The sales associates would sit there and say, oh, it looks fantastic on you. It looks fabulous. You should get it. It matches your eyes. It matches this. It, you sh it just looks amazing. It's just perfect. You should get it. You should get it. You need this in your collection type of thing. And, um, you know, I kind of, I was kind of like, oh, okay. You know, I'd get amped up or whatever it is. Sometimes I feel that the boutiques have this special lighting <laughs> that makes the items just look phenomenal. You know what I mean? Uh, I'll be at the boutique and I'll look at it and it's just glistening and it looks perfect. And you're just like, oh my God, this item is just amazing. You get home and you're kind of like, 
yeah, that's so amazing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's what happened to me so many times. Uh, and I was just, I kind of went into it. I was like, oh yeah, well the sales associate thought it looked great. And here is one of the most famous lines that I always get or that I always used to get. I don't get them anymore because they do a little bit of research. Remember how I said that I was going to talk about research? Uh, but I get the whole, it's the last one. We're not going to get him anymore. Uh, they're so hard to come by. They're flying off the shelves. You need to get it. If I mean, I won't be able to get another one for you. I have heard that so many times, you know. And if I was kind of apprehensive to add the item to my collection by hearing that from the sales associate, I'd sit there and say, oh, well, I don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss out. And then I'd go to get it. So I'm not trying to sit here and say that, um, and I know I keep saying that a lot throughout the video, but I'm not trying to say sit there and say that that is the, going to be the last one. I'm not trying to sit here and say that no matter what, you'll be able to find it somewhere else. Sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes a lot of these items are very, very limited. But for the most part, when it comes to certain brands, uh, if you're looking for it at Nordstrom, you'll be able to find it at Saks or Bergdorf's or wherever. And it might take a little bit more footwork in order to acquire it when you do make the decision. Uh, but that's not always going to happen, you know? And um, if you don't like the color fig on you, for example, don't get the fig just because the sales associate says it looks incredible on you, you know? And not all fashion houses pay their, um, their sales associates commission. Not all of them make commission on that. Uh, but <laughs> it's just, it's some of the things that I've come into contact with. And now I make a lot, I do a lot of research when it comes to the items and I know what colors are available or I know that this, um, you know, there's a lot of websites like Nordstrom's or Saks that will say that there's five left or four left or, you know, um, selling fast or whatever it is. They'll, they'll give you those little notes. So that way, if you go into the boutique and you try it out and you're thinking, oh, Oh, well, I really like it, but I don't know. I can't really make my decision. Now you know that there's other uh, supply or other stores that have it, not necessarily the boutique. Uh, so while it is great when you do have a wonderful experience with a sales associate that listens to what it is that you want and is able to, uh, again, guide you in that direction, there are also the ones that don't want to, um, that want to make that sale because that's their end game is to, to make the sale. I feel that, that, I mean, they're all doing their job, um, but just make sure, and you know all the facts before you go into the boutique, and uh, sometimes uh, they will tell you exactly what you want to hear, you know, and <laughs> it's, it's, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie, it's, sometimes it's really nice to hear that I'm like, oh man, salmon looks fantastic on me, when I know it doesn't because of my skin tone, it just washes me out horribly, but... I've, I've fallen into that whole thing when I'm, I'm like, oh yeah, it looks amazing. And then at home, it just, it doesn't look anywhere at all like it did at, you know, at the boutique. So <laughs> some sales associates are a little cheeky and, um, you know, it's just part of the business, but making sure that you have the information before you go into the boutique is always, always helpful. That way, um, they also know, and they can help you, uh, to get exactly what it is that you're looking for instead of just going in there randomly and saying, I don't know what I like, what do you recommend type of thing. So, and number five is judgment. And, uh, again, I'm not sitting here pulling out my violin and saying, oh, people are judging me because I'm talking about luxury goods. No, 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 no. Uh, but, I, you know, in my life, I don't have a whole lot of people, um, you know, my friends and family that get the whole uh, luxury goods thing. I've gotten a lot of criticism on it. I've gotten a lot of judgment on it. Um, you know, why do you like luxury goods? It's such a waste of money. It's so stupid. It's so this, it's so that. Uh, and I've gotten a lot of, um, you know, ridicule from coworkers as well, thinking that I'm insane for spending the amount of money that I do on my luxury goods. Uh, but I always say to each their own, you know, um, if someone starts being really negative towards Towards you and they start doing this and start doing that um, on on social media or when it comes to YouTube um, I didn't think that I was going to get as much judgment as I had anticipated I knew you know I felt that it was going to be on the same type of scale with co-workers and friends and things like that but when it comes to you know 
places like YouTube or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever it is, um, there are, you know, a lot of people like to hide behind the screen name and a lot of people like to troll um, the luxury community. You'll see it everywhere in the comment section, you know, like, oh, you're this, oh, you're that. And when it comes to something like that, just take what people say with a grain of salt. Don't give in to it. If you like something, um, then that's all that matters. You know, you do you and let them do them. And instead of getting crazy on them and just kind of backlashing and doing this, to them, just kind of just ignore the comment because I feel that two wrongs don't make a right. So why am I going to sit there and start uh, bad mouthing them and saying this and saying that? I would much rather just ignore the comment and move right along because I know in my heart of hearts that's not that's not the way that it is. You know what I mean? So I've kind of uh, briefly touched base on this before about the whole positivity and negativity that there's a lot of negative out there and it doesn't necessarily have to apply to YouTube and, and uh, Instagram, but I'm just saying that when you put yourself in that type of position, it's going to, you know, it happens. Unfortunately, it does. And a lot of people take advantage of that. So if you do experience uh, judgment on a small scale, like I did with friends, family, and coworkers, when it comes to um, the luxury community or when it comes to social social media, you'll also get that a lot more than you, than you ever thought. At least that's what's happened to me. Um, and you know, I get a lot of comments on my, on my Instagram and I can, I just can't help but laugh because some people will sit there and just give me paragraphs and paragraphs ab about what they think, uh, about my collection. And it just, it makes me laugh because they don't even know me and they're, you know, they're making an assumption. Uh, and of course I'm not going to stop that. I can't, I can't help how someone views me. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with, uh, the luxury community. And, um, the reason I say that is because a lot of people think that just because we like expensive things, expensive shoes, cars, it could be whatever it is, they automatically think that we're shallow people. They automatically have this uh, preconceived notion of the type of people that we are. And that's not necessarily how it is. Um, you know, the people that I usually talk to when it comes to social media, they are absolute sweethearts. At least that's what I have come across. And it doesn't have to only be about luxury goods. If you're going through a tough time, they'll sit there and they'll uplift you with their positive comments and um, the the support that you get is just amazing. So it's almost like for every negative comment that you get out there, you get 10 positive ones out there as well. So don't feed into the judgment. Don't feed into the negativity. Uh, just definitely, you know, be you. There's a whole like-minded community out there that gets you. You know, that's why I said that for every bad comment out there, there's 10 positive ones that really understand the struggle. Uh, you know, hashtag first world problems when it comes to picking a bag or picking a color or hardware or whatever it is. Some people think that that's so small and, you know, it's it's ridiculous for us to harp on that. And then other people completely get it and they're just like, oh yeah, I've been in that same scenario. And um, it's just such a wonderful community. And it's a shame that people feel that we are so, um, that we are as judgmental as they are of us and that we sit there and we're we're conceited and that we get everything handed to us on a silver platter. I'm not saying that there aren't some people <laughs> that do get that, not at all. But you know, don't don't feel bad if someone says something. Just kind of, you know, just shrug your shoulders and say you do you, I do me and we move on and that's it. <laughs> you know, and a lot of my friends, um, while they don't get it, they're just, they, they know not to sit there and start, start, you know, start harping on me if I can get the words out. Uh, they know not to start harping on me because I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to go toe to toe and try to defend this and that. No, because I'm not going to change their mind. Just like when someone sees my channel, they might automatically think that I am this, um, I'm this type of person that's going to be like, oh, well, I have so many Louis Vuittons and so many Chanel's and I'm better than you. <laughs> I'm not that type of person. <laughs> You know, so I hope that this video was helpful. I wanted it to be a little bit more relaxed. Uh, I know that I went on a few different tangents, but um, I just really like to express and I really like to share my experiences with you, uh, especially if you're going into luxury goods and just some things that I have come across throughout the years. And while it's gotten a lot better, uh, you know, uh, now, um, it was something that was very eye-opening, as I mentioned throughout the video. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. 
And I'd really like to hear what you guys have to say. What are some of the things that you didn't um, didn't expect when it came to luxury goods? What are some of the things that you had an idea, but then you know were completely blown out of the water when it came to buying these items? I'd really like to hear your comments uh, down below if you if you want to. If not, then <laughs> that's okay too. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.